Hey, my name is Nick Valesky with the Utah State University Extension Integrated Pest Management Program. Today we're going to talk about the western corn rootworm and how we can manage it in our sweet corn production. Here in Utah, the western corn rootworm is mostly a concern from June through about mid-July. The western corn rootworm is an occasional pest um, throughout Utah for our home gardeners, small farmers, and commercial farmers. As the name implies, its primary host is sweet corn and field corn. Adults are about six millimeters long and have yellow bodies with three black stripes on the four wings. Sometimes the black stripes overlap, making the wings appear solid black. Do not confuse them for similar looking striped cucumber beetles, rabbit bush beetles, three line potato beetles, or elm leaf beetles. Western corn rootworm eggs are white, football shaped, and less than one millimeter long. Newly hatched larvae are nearly colorless, but gradually turn white as they feed and get older. Mature larvae reach about 12 millimeters long and are creamy white in color with a brown head capsule. The pupa are translucent white and look similar to the adult stage. As the name suggests, larvae are the damaging stage because they feed on corn roots. Larvae disrupt the plant's ability to take in water. Initially, injured root tips will be discolored or have brown lesions. Over time, primary or secondary roots can be completely cut off. If this happens, the roots cannot absorb water as effectively as healthy roots. Heavy larval infestations can cause extreme goosenecking or lodging of corn stalks, making harvest very difficult. Damaged corn roots are also more likely to get root and stalk fungal diseases. If adult numbers are high enough, corn foliage can appear ragged from chewing. Western corn rootworms have one generation per year. In late summer, mated females deposit small egg clusters near the base of the corn stalks, where they remain unhatched for the winter. Females can lay between 500 and 1,000 eggs during their lifetime. Eggs must go through a cold period called dysdiapause before hatching in the late spring. Newly hatched larvae move down into the soil and begin feeding on the secondary corn roots. Larvae go through three instars and eventually start feeding on the primary corn roots. In July, larvae pupate in the soil, emerge as adults in five to 10 days, and begin feeding on the corn silks. For home gardeners and small farmers, consider growing varieties of corn that have high standability rating, which may help reduce lodging from corn rootworm larval feeding in untreated fields. Planting early may also disrupt the timing of adult emergence with corn silking. Early planted fields also have stronger root systems that may tolerate the damage better. Farmers with large amounts of corn may consider using sticky traps with pheromones to help in their monitoring efforts. They can tell us the initial and peak adult emergence during the silking and pollen shed of the corn. Use one sticky card for about every five acres of corn. Place the sticky card near the ear tip and check once a week. Consider treatment the following year in continuous corn if adults exceed about 35 per trap per week. For large farm operations, the western corn rootworm can be controlled with crop rotation. Rotate corn with other crops every three years to minimize survival and subsequent root damage. Using granular insecticides at the time of planting can effectively reduce corn rootworms. In furrow or banded applications work best if followed by cultivation and irrigation. Products using active ingredients like bifethrin or chlorophyllases can be incorporated in the soil for control of the larval stage. Insecticides for adult beetles are generally not recommended unless severe silk clipping is occurring. Also remember, adult insecticides can pose a serious threat to honeybees and other pollinators during the pollen shed. If you have questions about the western corn rootworm or any other pests that might affect our corn, feel free to reach out to our integrated pest management program or your local USU Extension County faculty member.